All right, everyone. So it's almost three o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm going to get supper going on the stove and kind of slow cook it on the stove. Now, um, I'm making cabbage and chopped meat. I've made this plenty of times in the past. I know you can do it in the slow cooker, but I ne never even thought about it uh, before the day got by. So, uh, so what I did, I'll just show you. I took a cabbage and just cut it up in pieces. So I'm going to do layers. And you can do this any way you want. Add whatever you want. I've got some cabbage there. And then I also cut up some onions. I'm going to throw those in. I cut up two onions. And I took one pound and one of those 10 ounce packs from the food pantry and just broke it up into pieces. I didn't like roll it up or anything, just broke them off. And I'm gonna put some here. This is probably one of our favorite meals. I love this meal. And we usually just have some butter bread with it. And usually this is like two and a half layers. So as I was uh, cutting all this stuff up and breaking up the ground beef, uh, I'm in the process of watching a Christmas movie on my tablet. And uh, that's why I didn't record while I was doing this. But I figure I'd just show you the main part of it. He's getting it together. I'm watching uh, My Christmas Dream with Danica Keller. And uh, I forget the guy's name. <laughs> anyway, so I like that movie. I've watched, so this is probably my fourth or fifth movie that I've watched so far this July. And uh, my free trial with Hallmark expired. And, but then they came out with a promotion for two months, 99 cents a month for two months. So each month is 99 cents. So I took on that so I could finish watching some Christmas movies. All right, uh, let me grab some uh, salt and pepper here. All right, so I'm just gonna throw some pepper. Yeah, I, I've never done Christmas in July, uh, but this year I'm just kind of watch, watching some of the Christmas movies. I didn't decorate or anything, um, but that's okay. It's kind of, in a way, sometimes it's hard to get into it <laughs> when it's so hot outside. We got the air, but having the air conditioner <laughs> makes it feel cold inside. So it kind of gives that wintry feel, I guess. All right, so that's all I do with the layers. And I'm gonna just go ahead and finish layering until I run out of everything. So I will be right back when I'm done with it. All right, so I got three full layers on here and I'm just gonna cover it. I'm gonna put the lid on it and I'm gonna start off like in a medium heat until I hear it uh, kind of like sizzling or bubbling from the ground beef juice. And once I hear that, I'll turn it down to a lower heat and then I'll just kind of slow cook it on the stove. It's only three o'clock. So, so yeah, it should be fine. And meanwhile, uh, usually when we have this meal, Glenn likes this chocolate fudge uh, cook and serve pudding. It's the warm pudding. This was sent to us in friend mail. Uh, we were sent two of them, I think, and I already used one and I'm gonna use the other one. And this, I don't eat this one. Uh, but this will go two days for him. So he'll have a bowl with this today and we'll have leftovers. So he'll have his bowl again tomorrow. So two days with that. All right, so I'm gonna get started on this and uh, I'll be back. All right, everyone. So here is our supper for this Tuesday evening and day number five for Cook What You Have or eat what you have. So I've got some cabbage and chopped meat. Uh, chopped meat is basically the ground beef and I used uh, um, 
1.10 ounces of ground beef. I used that 10 ounce pack from the food pantry and a pound that we had. So I also had onions in there, but they look like they've disintegrated. I thought I cut them big enough, but you can add whatever you want to in this. But And we also have butter bread with it. The two meals we have butter bread with most of the time is uh, this meal and tomato soup. So, all right. And I've got my chocolate pudding there. And Glenn had his uh, hot chocolate pudding. So that's our meal for tonight. Hey, everyone. So it's been a while since I, I've done any crafting. So I'd like to do some. And uh, I know it's Christmas in July. And I will get at least one Christmas in July crafting project done. But I still want to do some summer stuff. Because it is no matter how much I love fall and Christmas, it is still summer. So I would like to uh, get some of those projects done. And uh, so what I have here... Or this is like almost a 12 by 12 uh, it's not even real wood it's just like cheap you know stuff that would uh, break in half if you really bent it so um, so what I want to do with this is and I think on this video I'm just gonna talk about what I have three projects I want to work on and I'm just going to show you and kind of give you an idea of what I'm going to do. Alright, so I have this heat transfer. It's got a wagon wheel with a bunch of flowers. And what I need to do is paint this, this thing here. And what I thought, because it'll just look plain Jane if I just put it on like that, right? So what I thought to do is frame it out. Now I have these five gallon paint sticks. Uh, I got them at Walmart. They came in like three or four in a pack for like a dollar something. Alright, so what I'll need to do is cut them down and put them at the edge here. Just edge it out to frame it and then I'll have to mark it and cut them cut it here so my two pieces on the outside would be that length and then the inside so like these would be my two outer my two uh, frames on the side edges and then on the bottom I would do it cut it from here to here so it won't be the same length now I do have smaller paint sticks and let me, so these are I think just 12 inch ones but you could see they have this curve here and I thought to use this one on the ends on the bottom and the top but that curve just hits right there so it's not going to be a straight cut. Well, it would be a straight cut, but you're going to see that little curve there. So I'll have to use the bigger ones and just kind of cut them. The top and the bottom will be the same, and the two sides will be the same. And that will be framing it out. And once it's framed out... Ooh, maybe not. Oh, oh uh. <laughs> so that picture is going to fit in there perfectly without a lot of background, like just left. Uh, let me get another one. So you could kind of get an idea of where I'm going with that. So I got my top, my bottom, and it just kind of gets framed out. Now, what I want to do as far as colors is the background of this uh, thingamajig. <laughs> um, I can't even think of the name right now. But anyway, this is going to be where the, the transfer is going to go on. 
And I thought to paint this either a white or a ivory. This is a ivory. This is a snow white. And paint it either one of those. And then the frame sticks, I thought to paint a different color just to make it stand out a little bit more. And with that, I'd like to do either a celery or a moss green. So these are both greens, just different. One's lighter, one's darker. So the frame would actually be one of these colors. So that's my thought on that. So, <laughs> so the next time you see this, I will have already um, cut all the sticks and uh, hopefully I'm already painted up and putting this together the next time you see it. So yeah, so that's one project I want to work on. And then of course I'll hang this on the wall somewhere. I'm not sure where though, but that's my thought process on that. Because I have a few of these heat transfers with different pictures on them that I'd like to use up and get my walls decorated with them. So that's uh, project number one. All right. And I have um, these I ordered off Timu and these I ordered off Timu. Uh, you can see how thin they are. Um, I'm not sure if they call in MDF or whatever they are but that doesn't even sit flat <laughs> I think uh, yeah this is the better side but I have about 12 pack of those and yeah so all right so that's going to be project number one let me bring on project number two all right so project number two uh, I was sent these wood slices in friend mail and I haven't used them yet and I want to start using them. So what I thought to do uh, is paint the inside here uh, without trying to paint the edges because I still want that wood trim to, to show through. And again, I'll probably paint it ivory. And then I'll show you, I have two of them that I'm going to do. I have these two heat transfers. I have the bigger versions with these, and I ordered the big version and the small version together. So these are uh, just over 2 inches, 2.4 inches, 2.3 inches, something like that. And the, it fits perfectly on this wood slice. This wood slice is... Uh, I think it's a three or four inch. They're all kind of a little different size. Yeah, this is a three and a half inch wood slice. And I love these things. Yeah, these were uh, sent to me in friend mail. And it was probably late winter when I got these. And uh, so I'll paint it, I think, the ivory color. And I have this blue jay with the pink flowers. And... You see how perfect that will fit on there? I think that's going to look really pretty. So I have the Blue Jay and this uh, pair of Cardinals. And I think that will look real pretty on there too. So I don't have many um, bird heat transfers like that are this size. Most of them are a little bigger, like three over three inches. But I think these are perfect for these uh, wood slices. And so that's what I'm going to do there. Now, as far as displaying these, um, I could either drill a hole and put some twine on there to hang it. Or just hot glue twine behind it. Or I had another idea is to get like 
um, maybe a couple of wood slices get like a piece of uh, a block of wood and then hot glue them on there or wood glue or whatever and just have it up as a display piece so a couple of ideas there all right so that's another project I want to work on and then the third project I have these uh, cutting boards again it's not real wood it's just real thin stuff just kind of for like craft stuff um, I think I I don't remember where I, I think I ordered these off Timu and I might have like between four and six or something but again I'm going to paint this and I think I might paint this a celery green so like this color and what I'm going to put on there is this this is actually like a car decal, um, but I'm going to use it to put on here. So I think if it's a celery green, I think, I don't know if this, the pine will blend in that well. I don't know. Maybe I should do it a white. Because this, the decal is big enough where not too much of the background's going to show. And then what I thought to do is... Um, like hot glue a couple pieces of like a pine cone not pine cone and there's too big but you know just kind of hot glue something on there and or wrap some twine or glue hot glue some twine around there it's late and <laughs> I'm babbling so um, so yeah that's this all this is not going to be on there the sticker is already cut out in the shape of what it's going to be. I'll show you here. That's just a protection uh, thing. You can see it's it's cut out to the shape of the picture. So so yeah that that's going to be three projects that I want to work on and and there's so many more I, I want to do because I just, I haven't crafted in so long and I really just want to get back to it. So, so yeah. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm yawning. It's, uh, it's my bedtime. But, so I'm going to actually uh, start painting stuff. And then once I'm done painting and it's dried and I get those paint sticks cut down, then I can actually start putting it together. So, all right. But I just wanted to let you know the three projects I have upcoming for my crafting. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it because I haven't crafted in a while. And I really need to get back to it because it's, one, the, the stuff is so beautiful. And two, it's just so relaxing for me. I just kind of get in my own zone and, <laughs> and go from there. All right. So... Yeah, that's about it for now. All right. Thanks for listening to my babbling. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new day. It is Wednesday afternoon, almost 2 o'clock. And for breakfast, and I have to say, I we had the same breakfast as yesterday which would have been day five of the eat what you have challenge and we had the same thing today but i don't know if i recorded it or if i de because i deleted a bunch of videos yesterday and i might have accidentally deleted yesterday's but yesterday and today we had bacon and eggs for breakfast so um super simple you don't you know You've seen me cook bacon and eggs how many times, but that's what we had on day five and day six for breakfast. Um, for lunch, day five, uh, we had a bowl of watermelon. No, 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 we didn't actually. We didn't eat till supper. Um, and then uh, for supper, we had that cabbage and chopped meat, 
and then tonight we have leftovers of cabbage and chopped meat so we're having the same thing tonight so I won't record tonight's supper um, maybe I'll just take a quick video to show you but so yeah day five and day six are very similar if not exact in in what we ate and last night I didn't have a dessert uh, we didn't I didn't make a dessert we had fruit bowls watermelon and cantaloupe so and we still have some of that but I am going to make dessert today and I'm going to make two different desserts because I was originally going to make one big dessert which was uh, Reed Drummond's uh, which is the pioneer lady or the pioneer woman uh, on her Facebook page I found a lazy chocolate chip cookie bars yeah <laughs> so I was just gonna make that but then I saw the recipe and I saw that it has cake mix in it which is very similar to the chocolate chip muffin slash cake or cupcakes and uh, so I didn't think Glenn was gonna like that because he wasn't a huge fan of the chocolate chip cake uh, cupcakes or muffins and so this is where only using half of my cake mix comes into play uh, so I have half a cake mix left of the German chocolate because I don't eat German chocolate cake. It's convenient that I can make that for him. And in the freezer I have leftover German chocolate frosting. So I don't even have to make fresh frosting. So that works out very well. However, for myself, I think I am going to try those lazy chocolate chip uh, cookie bars just to see how they are, if they're pretty similar, and give Glenn a taste to see if he would have liked it. So, all right, I'm not going to record doing this as it's a box and it's already made. So, um, I'm, today's just going to kind of be letting you know we're, we're, what we're eating, which is the same exact thing as yesterday. All right, so that's how it's going to go on day six of the Eat What You Have Challenge and stretching your meals for leftovers. All right, everyone, so now I'm going to make my dessert, and I am going to try those lazy chocolate chip cookie bars, even though I think it's going to be a lot like my uh, the ones I tried with the cake mix and the chocolate chips came out to be muffins slash cupcakes. Uh, but that's okay because I like them. <laughs> but I'll just try this one. And since I made Glenn his own dessert, I'm not going to make the entire recipe, which calls for one box of cake mix. And if you've been with the channel for a while, you know I I cut my cake mixes in half. So I use now one half of it now, and then that way I have uh, the other half for another time of dessert. So um, what I usually do is I weigh my bag I weigh my bag of cake mix and it's 15 and a half I'm gonna give it it says 15 and three quarter but I'm gonna say 15 and a half because this is usually about a quarter off all right so I don't need that anymore Actually, I do need that still. <laughs> what I start doing is just pour some in my bowl. And then I weigh what's left in here. So it was 15 and a half. And that just cut that in half. I need seven and three quarters on in here and in the bowl so and if it's off just a little bit it's no big deal that's just me trying to get it right I got seven and a half right here so I can put a little bit back seven and three quarter so and again, it's probably a little off because I said it's usually about a quarter off, but it's no big deal. And again, I just tape, tape it closed and write half on my box and then put it away for next time. All right, so I got the remainder uh, closed in here. I taped it shut. 
I wrote half on the box so I know it's only a half a thing of course once you lift it you'll figure it out but and then I go ahead and tape this shut as well there and now that's uh, ready to use next time okay so now what I'm going to do is now again I'm not using the full recipe I'm cutting this recipe in half so in the full recipe ask for one stick of butter melted so I've got a half a stick of butter here and I'm gonna go ahead and melt it oh you know what I shouldn't have poured that in yet Okay, so don't put your cake mix in first. <laughs> um, you can like weigh it in another bowl, but the bowl you're going to mix in, keep it clear. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and melt my half a stick of butter. And if you do the full recipe, it says use a 9 by 13 uh, pan. So, all right, so what I did was I went ahead and let my butter cool off just a tad bit because it was super hot and I don't want it to cook my egg. <laughs> so we got melted butter. And then we're going to whisk that together with the egg. Original recipe calls for two eggs. I'm using one. So let's whisk that together. All right, now we're going to put in the cake mix. I'm guessing it's about to get real thick and I need to get a spoon. Oh, I'm just flipping stuff out everywhere. All right. So I'm guessing this is going to be cake-like rather than an actual cookie bar, if what you would think is a cookie bar. And it calls for a yellow cake mix, but I don't have yellow, I have white, so that's what I'm using. And with the egg yolk in there, it'll, it'll make it a little yellow. Alright. And now we're going to mix in chocolate chips. Original recipe calls for a whole bag, but I'm only going to use half a bag. And you can use whatever you want. I'm using milk chocolate versus semi-sweet. Since this is my dessert, I'm, I'm a milk chocolate kind of girl. So that's what I'm going to use. Alright, so now we're going to put in our 8x8 and instead of greasing it, I'm just going to put parchment paper in there for easy cleanup. Alright, so I've got my parchment paper in here.
you'll just have to smooth it out. Oops. <laughs> you could put like a little bit of oil under the parchment paper to make it stick more, but I don't want to. Yeah, this caught my eye last night as I was uh, scrolling through Facebook. So I figure I'd give it a try. All right. That's good enough for me. All right, let's get it in the oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Well, for a full recipe, it was 20 minutes. So for the 9x13, I'll check this at 15 minutes or so. Hey, everyone. So we are outside now. I don't even know what time it is. 4.30. No? Quarter after 5. Oh, it's quarter after 5 in the afternoon now, and we're outside. Much cooler day. Feels much better. It's a little breezy, a little cooler breeze in the 70s. No dew point. Dew point's like way low in the 50s, so it's not humid or anything, so perfect. Um, so, I just... Uh, Brought out some coffee and uh, German chocolate cake for Glenn, and I had him taste a little piece of that uh, uh, lazy chocolate chip cookie bar that I made. I love it. I love it. It's. I think it's really good. Glenn. Glenn doesn't think it's bad either. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend making that. But right now we're gonna share some friend mail with you. So let's get to opening that. All right, everyone, so we got two boxes here, and I've scribbled, scribbled out the name and address of the person sending it. Um, so let's go ahead and open one up. Let's go ahead and open this one up first. Sorry for the outdoor noise. Uh, so somebody's weed whacking. Alright. Huh? Yeah. Let's see what we got here. This is wrapped. Oh, this is for Glenn. There's a uh, stuffed green olives. It's for you, babe. So she wrapped it in a towel. Is that the same as what I had last time from that? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. This is stumps. I never heard of stumps. My dog isn't spoiled. I'm just well trained. <laughs> okay, good. Yep. There's a cute towel that it was wrapped in and that says my dog isn't spoiled I'm just well trained and that is so much the truth here <laughs> Gypsy has us well trained so some green olives now I don't think there's a card or a letter or anything but I know who this came from. Uh, she let me know it was coming. So this is from Sharon. And Sharon, thank you so much. Oh man, look at this. We're never gonna run out of straws, babe. Straws? These are straws. Yes, Sharon, we could definitely use this stuff. Yeah, these are like wrapped straws. Wow. Yeah, wow. Look at this, guys. Look at all these straws. That's awesome. We'll never have to buy straws again. 
Yeah, see they got the wrapper on them still? Wrapped. Yep. Individually wrapped. Wow. That's a, awesome. Thank you so much. At least it could be funny in there. <laughs> All right. Ooh, got spaghettios. We got three cans of spaghettios. These are quick snacks. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Gypsy's over there laying on the grass all nice and pretty, wagging that tail. <laughs> Dinty Moore, oh yeah. Two cans of Dinty Moore soup. I love, I know a lot of people don't like Dinty Moore, but I love Dinty Moore. And if you put like a Dinty Moore on white rice or something, it tastes delicious. But thank you so much. Spam, we got some Spam. Two cans of Spam. Thank you so much, Sharon. I uh, I grew up on Spam. My mom used to make Spam. Oh, oh. Hopefully it didn't open. <laughs> nope, it's safe. Okay, it didn't open. But my mom used to fry Spam up all the time and make sandwiches from them or put them in tortilla as we always had tortilla so thank you so much actually you make them cracker crumbs do what cracker crumbs cracker crumbs yeah what coat them coat them, coat them and fry them yeah okay so that's glenn's my, that's what my mom used to do all right so glenn glenn just said his ma used to coat spam in cracker crumbs and fry them up like that so if you've ever done that, drop it down in the comments. Or let me know in the comments how you cook up Spam if you eat it. I usually just fry it and put it in bread. <laughs> oh, another tumbler. Oh, with paws. That's so cute. That's cute. It's got paws all over it. That's a nice sized tumbler. It's probably like 20 ounce. That's cool. Thank you so much. Oh, Dove. Four bars. Four bars of Dove soap. Body soap. I love Dove. So thank you so much for that, Sharon. Woohoo. Ready. I don't know if this is the stuffing or, yeah. But it's a large plastic bag. Good for something. Thank you so much, Sharon. Olives are pretty good. Olives are good? Uh, Glenn says the olives are good. Oh, look at this. Rice cooker. Woohoo. Now, as you know, I always make my rice on the stove top. And we've always talked about getting a rice cooker. Oh, nice. This is I don't know how, how much it takes, but it says three cup right uh, uncooked rice. Very cool. Thank you so much, Sharon. I love it. Now we can cook with the rice cooker, babe. Nice. Thank you so much for that. All now right. we'll finally have good rice. Shut up. <laughs> Glenn says, now we'll finally have good rice. Tell him to shut up. <laughs> I'm being smart. I know. Yeah, if you haven't guessed already, Glenn's a smart ass. It wouldn't be him if he didn't have a smart ass comment. I'm only a smart ass behind the camera. <laughs> In front of the camera, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thank you so much for this, Sharon. And we really appreciate this. Glenn loves the green olives. Huh. I like the tumbler too. Oh, you can have the tumbler. I thought I... I think I got it last time. You can have that one. So now this is the second time, I believe, uh, that Sharon has sent um, 
a box with some of her food pantry items. And last time she sent a tumbler as well, and I believe I got that one. So Glenn will get this one. So thank you so much. That's awesome. Thanks everyone. We really appreciate that. I'll take those things separate. You guys are amazing. You guys are so good to us. Oh, there's my chocolates. Cool. What is this? Is that a bag for like... Like a cooler bag? Green Rabbit Fresh Stuff Fast. Now, I wonder if that was to keep the chocolates. So here's the chocolates that um, didn't come in the box the other day when we did the last uh, friend mail. And I, the letter said there was chocolate, so look at this. Lindor's Milk Chocolate Truffles for me. <coughs> <laughs> <coughs> this is my favorite. Milk Chocolate Lindor Truffles is my favorite. Thank you so much. And... Uh, sure. I'm sure it was frozen. Yeah, so well, what I think all this is was to keep them from melting in transit or something because these are like freeze bags. These were frozen at one time. Oh yeah. I've never seen them packed that way. That yeah, the, the packing is so thick. I've never seen them sent that way. That's your thinking. Wow. Thank you so much. This uh, again comes from Leanne. Uh, Leanne sent all that stuff from Amazon and Leanne I know you say I don't have to uh, put it on your on the video but but I am so <laughs> so thank you so much Leanne my tummy thanks you <laughs> thank you oh I love these I love these well, don't you think she should at least give one to her husband <laughs> maybe I'll give one to Glenn <laughs> <laughs> There's certain things you have to fight me for. <laughs> Lindor truffles is one of them. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm assuming we could just freeze these just over. Freeze them. So we're gonna throw these packs in the freezer. Yeah, actually, that would work even when we go somewhere. Throw them in the cooler. Yeah. I'll keep the cooler. Everything else cold in there too. Yep. So I'm gonna throw these in the freezer right now. Thank you so much. You should throw the truffles in there for a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're hard. Yeah, they're rock hard. Feel those. They were frozen. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, those... I wonder uh, how long they were in transit. Yeah, I don't know. But those uh, freezer packs did a good job because uh, these truffles are completely rock hard. So they were frozen. So good job on that. I've never thought of something like that. Yeah, it says protect what's perishable. Don't do that away either. No, I'm going to save that. Wow, thank you so much. Well, Leanne and Sharon, thank you so much for your generosity and thinking of us. Uh, we can't tell you again how much we appreciate it. And we'll definitely share it. We definitely can use all that stuff. So, so thank you. I can't believe all those straws. <laughs> I'm curious to see what a rice cooker does. For yeah. The hot rice cooker. Yeah. So we're definitely going to use that rice cooker for sure. So that's amazing. All right. So there is the friend mail for today. And uh, as I said, we're just having leftovers for supper. But I talked about last night, um, I'm doing a two-day video here, uh, days um, five and six. 
of the challenge. So we're just having our leftovers tonight. The cabbage and chopped meat. And yeah, that's just... Uh, so when we uh, had it last night, we both actually wanted more. But then we saved it for tonight so we could stretch our meals. And then we just had fruit later on. I think I already mentioned that. Yeah. All right. So thank you again, Sharon and Leanne, for your generosity. We really appreciate it. All right, everyone. So I just wanted to show you the lazy chocolate chip cookie bars. And I have to say they are delicious. I love them. Uh, it's a cross between cake and cookie. So... Not too much cakey feel and not too much cookie feel, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But it looks it looks delicious and it is delicious. So uh, again, I cut the recipe in half for an eight by eight, and it was it's perfect for me. <laughs> so so yeah, I just wanted to show you that, and I do recommend that recipe for sure.